वेलकम टू लेक्चर थर्टी फाइव दिस इज ऑन ए न्यू टॉपिक विच इज ऑन अनमेंड एरियल वैकल सो आई विल गिव यू लिटिल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सिस्टम एंड हाउ दिस इज यूजफुल इन जियोमेटिक्स इंजीनियरिंग फॉर वेरियस एप्लीकेशन इफ यू लुक एट द डेवलपमेंट इन जियोमेटिक्स इंजीनियरिंग इन लास्ट फिफ्टी ईयर्स सो देर इज ए चेंज इन द टेक्नोलॉजी Uh, for example there is a fast change from the conventional uh, data collection instrument to the electronic devices so we had for example electronic distance meter then afterwards the total station came which gave us the coordinate three dimensional coordinates of the various ground features useful for mapping then we had robotic uh, equipment uh, like robotic total station where manpower was cut down and the speed of data collection was much much faster after that we had global positioning system laser scanners and the next quantum jump which has taken place in the field of now geomatics engineering for spatial data collection is unmanned aerial vehicle so with the help of this unmanned aerial vehicle we can collect very high resolution data about the earth surface so uh, this is popularly also known as a drone so if we uh, define uh, unmanned aerial vehicle or a drone so it is a, a, a remote controlled pilotless aircraft so this is an aircraft where there is no pilot and it is flying without people inside controlling it so it is controlled from the ground with the help of some controlling device and it can fly to the whereas the autonomous type Uh, we have a slightly different concept so they fly automatically so if you see the more in depth definition of these drones uh, it is defined as the aerial vehicle which is powered which requires some sort of battery and it doesn't carry any human operator so in the aircraft we have the human operator but here we don't have any human operator and it is using the aerodynamics force to provide the vertical lift and can fly autonomously or maybe you know remote controlled with the help of some controller devices so this is the kind of uh, a device which we are using uh, to collect the data about the earth surface there are different types of drones available there are drones which can uh, fly for a very very long time and useful for military applications but there are drones nowadays which we are using in surveying mapping and geomatics engineering applications if we look back the history of it we uh, earlier for example use in 1849 uh, this uh, data was collected from the space with the help of the balloons so these balloons uh, then they were used uh, uh, bombing the area to target a certain area and to destroy a certain area then later on in world war 1 uh, a device was developed which was called the catering bug and this was like unmanned aerial torpedo it was developed during the world war 1 and uh, one can see in the picture it's a, it's you know very heavy and uh, Uh, it's uh, will fly to the area again using the aerodynamics concept and um, uh, collect the data or maybe used in for the war purpose so uh, over a period of time because they were developed mainly during the war so they are used in military in war in battlefield uh, for a large number of applications so if you see pre 20th century the bombs were attached to the balloons and they were dropped at the desired locations then we had in world war 2 radio controlled uh, drones for anti aircraft training purpose then in vietnam war for example the reconnaissance drones came which will fly to the area and collect uh, some basic data of the area which uh, is useful for planning purpose then we have full size combat drones uh, afterwards and there are some more applications like bordering the area patrolling the border continuously doing the surveillance of the border search and rescue operation so these are other operations as far as the 
warfare or the military is concerned where the drones have been used for a long time. Uh, we had a target drone, we have the surveillance assets, so we can see in the picture also that drone is targeting from a space a certain area. So, these are uh, uh, used in uh, uh, military purpose, but first powered flight was uh, actually the Mr. Wright and Mr. Wilbur. Um, they act, uh, in 1903, they had designed this first power flight. So, it were driving the power with the help of uh, the some battery and it flew up to uh, 12 seconds in the air and it went up to 120 feet. But there were certain issues with that and issues were its performance and in controlling it from the uh, ground. So, this was the first powered flight which was again a bigger in size and very heavy. Then World War I changed the complete change the technology of designing technology of data collection and then after that there was a worldwide adoption of this particular technology. There were a lot of changes which were made and the um, device was made much much smaller uh, so that it can fly without much of the vibrations. Then first unmanned aircraft was a Hewitt Sperry aerial torpedo and Caterpillar which was somewhere between 1917 and 1980 these were developed and one can see in these images also that the uh, how the uh, earlier unmanned aircraft look like which were used for uh, war purpose or data collection purpose. So, the uh, catering bug in 1918 it looks like this which is shown on the left side and the radio plane in 1939 is shown on the right side. So, there was a uh, on the basis of the feedback on the basis of the requirement there was a uh, continuous development in the drone technology. If we look at today you know what are the modern military drones. So, they are uh, they, they can carry very heavy weight and they can fly longer time, their endurance is much much higher as compared to the earlier one and successfully they are used for a very large number of activities and we call uh, 3D missions for which they are used, dull, dirty and dangerous mission. So, maybe we are using for bombing purpose or surveillance purpose etcetera, etcetera for the warfare military purpose and uh, where from where this term drone has come actually the aircrafts uh, if we look at the background of those aircrafts they are named after some insects like uh, 1929 there was a gypsy moth one of the most common aircraft in UK. So, it was named a gypsy moth in 1935 we installed the radio controls in this uh, and this was known as the tiger moth. So, it was a successor uh, a new version of the gypsy moth first. Then afterward the queen bee came and it was the first returnable and reusable. You can reuse it, it will return to that point. So, uh, the name was queen bee. So, you can see here that in 90s the drones were resembling the shape of the bee. So, this is the bee and it has you know so many legs. So, similarly there were wings for the air uh, the uh, UAV systems, but if we um, as the technology changes the shape also has changed. The uh, instrument has become more versatile, more aerodynamics, more speed, more duration, durability. So, drone of the 2000 onwards we can see in the picture here um, they look like uh, you know kind of a fixed wing uh, kind of a or a rotatory wing kind of a, uh, drones and today what we see is different size different shape. So, we are using the drones for a large number of activities civilian activity we are using for sports we are using for uh, cinematography uh, we are using for 
you know hobbies as a hobby purpose so for a very very large number of activity uh, we are using and depending upon its specification depending upon the size and the purpose they are available in different cost also uh, there are various names in the literature if we look at the literature uh, uav unmanned aerial vehicles have been named uh, by different uh, ways uh, some literature it's called radio controlled vehicle in some literature you will find it is called remotely piloted vehicle because there is no pilot here and everything is remote controlled from the ground itself uh, or remote controlled vehicle it is also known as the autonomous control vehicle because there are drones which are autonomous in nature and they are using the coordinate systems of the gps in order to follow a defined path of course this is a pilotless vehicle so in many of the literature you will find it is called the pilotless vehicle unmanned aerial vehicle no man here unmanned aircraft system so in uh, particularly in a country like us they call it a unmanned aircraft system and very popularly in the layman language this is called as the drone system so uh, if we see today we have uh, uh, drone systems or unmanned aerial vehicle systems which are available with uh, with the different technology with different sensor systems with different way of capturing the data and uh, their range is different their height uh, you can uh, take it to the different heights also so they are available in different specification and can be used for uh, various various activities apart from the mapping so they uh, are not just limited to the quadcopters which uh, many of us have seen in the normal function or in a marriage function a quadcopter is flying to the area and taking the images they are uh, fixed wing also uh, like uh, it is shown here so um, uh, each of them has a different characteristics and use for different applications if we uh, see the now the timeline of the drones how the, the technology has developed and how we have got from very big size of uh, conventional kind of a drone to the uh, very modern kind of a which you can even keep your palm top and fly which are the uh, used for by the hobbyist then we have in from uh, as, as we see from 1960 to 1980 we have uh, pilot in loop and had near real time control of the aircraft and flight surfaces then we had uh, in 1990 onwards uh, you know we had unmanned aerial vehicles uh, where some automation has also started so we could automate the things many things which we were doing it with the help of uh, some human intervention it could be done autonomously and uh, in 2005 onwards you know the some of the flights most of the flights profiles can be pre programmed so we are taking help of the software and also uh, the coordinates of the gps we define a particular path way path and have the coordinate system and control the entire thing with the help of the base stations from the ground now why uh, this drone is important and why should we actually use this uh, drone in geomatics engineering so this is actually um, uh, we have drones which are uh, continuously you know when you flying the data continuously taking the images or uh, the lidar data and they are very cheap to operate they are providing us very very high resolution data so you are sending the drone to the area where even the human being cannot go and uh, dangerous areas are there or difficult to reach areas so drone can fly to the area collect the data give you very high resolution data in the form of the images or in the form of the point cloud data and as and when you require you know so you can have uh, better frequency data as and when you require you can send the drone collect the data and you can analyze the data now this technology is found to be uh, economical it saves lot of cost uh, particularly when you are monitoring the area 
uh, after every regular interval of time because even the satellite images the time period is fixed temporal resolution is fixed aerial photography is difficult to obtain uh, so frequently so this technology was providing us very very frequent data and uh, this particular data was high resolution so we could see even the minute features and prepare thematic maps or create a 3d model of the area so if we look at the uh, the cost comparison why we should use the drone in our uh, so this is slide is showing the cost comparison of the data so here um, when we are doing the land survey as i told you in my first slide that uh, you know how the developments have taken place and we find that uav is the next revolution which has taken place in the field of geomatics engineering so if we carry out a mapping work or the survey work for area using those equipment uh, so land survey if we carry out and uh, plot the area covered in on x axis and the cost which is involved on y axis so we can see that the curve the uh, green curve here is more or less you know uh, it is a linear uh, trend it is showing so what it is showing is that the as the area which is to be surveyed increases the uh, cost of land survey will also increase in the same ratio so cost will increase as the area which uh, you want to survey or collect the data will increase but what is happening in the case of unmanned aerial vehicle the trend is uh, very encouraging here and uh, it is uh, like a almost a stable line for some area and then there is a small rise as the area increases as the cost wise there is a small rise Other, again the curve is almost flat and then then a small rise when the area is increasing and you find that the um, minimum and the maximum rise is not that great as we see in the land survey so we find that the cost of carrying out the survey using uav is much much less as compared to land survey so this is one of the reasons actually we should go for uh, uav based survey because we ultimately end up in saving lot of funds and also get same you know better resolution data now we have with us uh, uh, the knowledge of satellite based mapping we have the knowledge how the um, airborne you know when we are collecting the data from the aircraft in photogrammetry uh, we can collect the data and prepare the map so we compare the three together now that how uh, these three uh, technology where the data is available from drone system where the data is available from the airborne system aircraft system and the data is available from the satellite system so let us see what is the difference now as far as the resolution is concerned the uh, the amount of information content from the data a degree of availability is concerned the operation mode and the cost of the operation so resolution in case of uav data will be uh, centimeter to meter resolution very very high resolution data we are getting which we cannot get from the airborne system as you can see up to 50 meter resolution will be there or from the satellite uh, we may have uh, 10 kilo 10 meter to 1 kilometer and nowadays if we take very high resolution satellite data you can get less than a meter now degree of availability is also important because there are many studies where we require very frequent data in case of a flood in case of a disaster in case of a forest fire in case of earthquake you know when these activities take place we require very frequent data because there is a change in the topography and then there are so many other things the loss uh, estimation has to be done so it is very very high degree of availability is high as in when we require we can send the drone to the area and drone can collect the data and for airborne systems and helicopter systems it is somewhere between high to moderate systems because of the cost involved and satellite will say poor poor 
when we are comparing with the UAV systems. So, we do not get uh, say twice a day or we do not get that data at such a high resolution. Now, mode of operation uh, we can operate this UAV either in the autonomous mode or the remote control mode. So, two ways we can do either we control it from the base station or it is automatically using the waypoints which are defined predefined uh, with the help of the GPS coordinates and they are already uh, put into the software input to the software and and the, the drone system will use those coordinates and follow that defined pipe. The airborne systems and the helicopter systems uh, human pilot is required and human pilot actually will uh, move to the area, fly to the area and will take the decision to cover the whole area and to decide the flight line. Satellite is also autonomous when you are launching the satellite in the orbit they are continuously taking the uh, data for the whole area. Now, uh, payload capacity when we see is a limited payload capacity. So, whenever we are talking of the UAV for civilian purpose, so they cannot take very heavy load with them. So, uh, payload capacity is limited and that is uh, almost everywhere in case of this airborne also and in case of the satellite also. So, there is a limit how much load uh, a particular system can carry. But this is important the next one which is the operating cost of that. Operating cost is quite low when we are talking of the data collection by UAV, when we are talking of uh, by airborne medium to high operating cost is and satellite data is uh, further high cost will be there. As we go for higher and higher resolution satellite image the cost will increase it is related to the cost the resolution is related to the cost. But uh, as we can see in the UAV that uh, we get very economical kind of a survey for the area as I have shown you in the first slide also. So, um, that is why uh, you know if we have comparison also this is also one of the reason that we should go for UAV data. Uh, in our application in data collection and application part. Now, uh, we can use uh, uh, for surveying application collecting the data and then creating the thematic maps or using it for some application and we can use this uh, drone for surveillance application also that they are continuously monitoring a particular area and providing the data for that area. So, they are on the surveillance job. So, uh, we do not require you know when we are doing surveillance application we do not require very very accurate coordinates, but we require very accurate coordinates when we are doing the surveying application. So, that is the basic difference we have to decide for which application we want to use a particular drone systems. So, we require highly you know uh, accurate systems uh, for our surveying application as, as compared to the surveillance application. Now, what are those surveying applications? Although we are aware we can use it for topographical mapping, we can generate the contours, we can do for railway, road, pipeline. So, all that corridor planning can be done, mine surveying. In mine surveying we are and we are ultimately estimating the volume of uh, the mined area or the material which has been removed. Uh, it is basis uh, on the basis of the three dimensional coordinate. We can create a DEM very very useful for flood mapping uh, and other applications. Uh, 3D city modeling can be carried out, irrigation planning, geo intelligence which is upcoming area for homeland security and defense, uh, surveying the coastal zone area, plotting the cross section and S section for uh, along a given route and profile. So, these are some of the uh, surveying applications for which we require uh, accurate system, accurate drone system can give us the coordinates. There are lot of advantages of using this system that is why we should go for drone system and some are listed over here. Uh, the uh, cost wise you know it is a cost effective system. So, this is the biggest advantage as I have shown you in previous slide also. Then high resolution spatial resolution data. We will see in subsequent lectures uh, the data products which we are getting from 
the drone systems because it is flying at a lower altitude. So, we know from our background knowledge lower the altitude higher is the resolution of the data, but the coverage of the area would be small in that case. So, when we have very high resolution data naturally we are uh, expected to get very very high accuracy uh, planimetry accuracy as well as the height accuracy when we are creating a 3D model from that area. Not that difficult to deploy you know fly to the area and uh, collect the data. No hindrances from the clouds because when we are taking the data from the aircraft or satellite the the atmosphere and the clouds come in between and sometimes we have the images with lot of cloud cover. So, very very difficult to analyze those images when the details are obscured from the cloud. So, uh, this is flying at a much lower altitude about 120 meter or so. So, uh, there is no question of any cloud coverage in the image. So, you do not have any hindrances from the cloud. So, very very useful. Uh, this is a great tool for the surveillance because there are drones uh, which basically can stay at a point for a longer time. Uh, so, uh, those rotary drones can stay longer at a point. So, they become stationary almost. So, you can uh, have a surveillance kind of a tool uh, for an area for less, let us say the border area and continuously uh, it can provide you the data of that area. Uh, then this is a highly flexible and mobility. So, you can send it to a mountainous region, you can send it to those regions where there is a danger to the human life, nuclear waste site for example or snow clad area, snow covered area or the area where the forest fire has taken place. So, this can go, in, you can send it and it will collect the data. You can get a real time information. This is another good advantage of using the drones that all the data which would be available to us now uh, we can get in the real time almost real time analysis can be carried out because you are getting the continuous data. So, this data set uh, you can geo reference with the help of the GPS coordinates which are attached to all the data sets and um, also at the same time you can stitch them together that is what we call as the mosaicing of the data. So, data could be mosaiced and data could be geo referenced and that continuous data one can uh, have in the real time and carry out the analysis with that data. This is very useful in disaster prone region to save life. So, in a disaster area in flood affected area for example, or somebody has drawn in the water body. So, these drones actually can uh, reach to that particular point, uh, spot and uh, save the life of the people and there are examples where the drones have uh, lifted the people, saved the people from the uh, dangerous areas like people have gone in the mountaineering area and they are stuck there. So, uh, these drones are helping the life, uh, uh, helping to save the life of the people. Delivery of the goods, we know that uh, you know this is being used for delivery of the items and the goods also. It is a very effective for the spray of pesticides and chemicals. So, in the field of um, agriculture science, uh, these are uh, very useful for spraying the pesticides and chemicals on the crops because sometimes the crops are um, damaged by the insects. So, in that case uh, a proper decision has been taken and this for example, has been used during the COVID-19 also. Uh, it has been used for a large number of activities as well, monitoring the people, those who are going outside the road, monitoring the vehicle on the road, monitoring the uh, garbage areas. So, all that thing has been done. It is a uh, communication of the warning and emergency message. So, uh, you can spread the message through these, uh, you can uh, communicate, you can give the warning to the people which has been done during the COVID-19 period as well. Well, uh, it has some disadvantage also not that um, it has all the disadvantages only. So, we have uh, the uh, limited capabilities and the coverage. So, this is one of the disadvantage that it will cover a very small area at a given time because of the high resolution. 
but you can cannot fly for a longer time so you get the limited coverage area at a given time because of the life of the battery also that it can fly maximum 15 to 20 minutes and then it needs battery replacement and then you can again fly to the area care is required to use in the populated area uh, you cannot straight away use in the populated area there are certain rules and regulations uh, which uh, the government of that particular country has specified that what are those guidelines, what are the rules and regulations which one should follow when flying actually these uh, to the area. So, we will learn in subsequent lectures, but we cannot fly straight away to those populated areas because of the danger to the life of the people. The chances of misuse due to the easy operation. Uh, you must have also heard that uh, you know somebody has seen the um, drone flying to the area and the reason is not known. So, uh, chances of misuse are also there because it is easy to fly and, and uh, collect the data. The, the next is that you require highly qualified and trained pilot. So, this is a mandatory also, this is a requirement also when you are flying to a, a particular area. You need a certain training, you need a certain certificate, you, see, you need a certain license in, in order to do that. Otherwise, you are not uh, officially allowed to fly uh, the drone to the area. So, this is very, very important part of the entire drone flying. The privacy and the security issues are there. The people have actually flown the drone to um, the areas which are considered to be the quite private like near the beaches and uh, somebody's courtyard. Uh, so, there are issues, privacy issues, there are security issues related um, near the airport, near the military establishment, one cannot fly and collect the data. Permissions are required to fly and collect the data. It is not uh, that it is free for all, you require permission from the administration uh, in order to fly to the area and collect the data and most of the drones cannot provide long flight duration as I have mentioned that 15 to 20 minutes is the flight duration and operations are susceptible to weather. We have to understand the weather condition also in highly windy weather also you cannot collect the data. Now, there are countries um, around the globe you can see in this slide which are using this for warfare purpose and uh, we can see that uh, the, the uh, number is also given here. The uh, forecast is given that about 1000 by the US and the last one is the Israel which is about 20. So, this shows that you know how the uh, uh, government of each country is using it. Now, we look at the duration of the flight. So, average flight time of most of the drone is somewhere you can see in that 20 minutes and there are drones which are now expensive drones are there which are fixed wing drones and you can fly for longer time and duration could be about 50 uh, minutes or so approximately. But uh, average flight time will be about 20 minutes or so for uh, a rotary kind of a drone. Now, global market of this drone. So, this slide shows the uh, forecast of the global market up to 2024 that what is the uh, potential in the civilian application and what is the potential in the defense application. You can see the blue color here indicates the defense applications and the green one is showing the civilian applications. So, there are more and more applications in the defense sector which is expected in the future potential. Now, the government uh, um, is spending lot of money, consumer is spending, the industry is spending lot of money. So, this is shows that estimated investment on the drone hardware when we are developing the drone for the different. So, this is um, shown that how the, the investments are also on the increase uh, with respect to time. Then there are drones uh, which are actually giving us a lot of revenue. So, projected worldwide market growth is shown in this slide and this is uh, uh, up to 2025 predictions are there that how much revenue and uh, will be earned and how many drones in thousands will be sold. So, 
this blue indicates the how many drones in thousands would be sold in the subsequent year for different application. There are uh, 10 uh, uh, innovative technology which are uh, important for the future and this is shown in this slide 8 plus 2 technology where drone is also one of the important innovative technology for the future. Uh, whether we are talking of virtual reality or we are talking of the artificial intelligence, blockchain analysis, internet of things, 3D printing. So, we find that in that uh, 10 technology, the drone technology which is providing the uh, lot of important data and applying this data for um, de different applications by the combination of this technology is the future. Applications, very large number of application, whether it is a military application or it is a civilian application. So, this is a list and this is the exemplary list where we are using for law enforcement, in film industry, in telecommunication, in agriculture, in gas mapping, in firefighting. So, very large number of applications of these drones are there. We will learn in the next presentation. Thank you very much.